Hey, how you doing? Welcome to another chapter of Comments from the Peanut Gallery. We are at almost end of March of 2021. And want to say something about what's, what's common knowledge. You know, because what's common knowledge at one time in history, all of a sudden, oh, over a period of time, a generation, one generation, and what everybody knew at one point in time, all of a sudden, it's like a new thing, a new thought. <gasps> I never thought about that before. I never knew that. Are you sure that's right? Maybe you're lying to me. <laughs> There are so many things that have been, what's the word, redacted, hidden, covered, obscured, so that you can't see it. Why don't they want you to know? Why? It was common knowledge. Why don't they want you to know? What's hidden in the schools, in schools, what aren't they teaching? Public education, public education, help us all. Documents, documents from the government where all these lines are blackened out and you can't see, you can't see what was written, what was actually said. A phone conversation where 90% of it's redacted. Well, there's something from history I'm going to tell you about, and I would venture to say that even though at one point in time this was common knowledge to everybody, everybody, <coughs> what I'm going to tell you, you might not know anything about. It might take you months of looking at the actual documents to go. Huh, maybe he was telling the truth about what really happened. <laughs> and so what is this thing of history that's been hidden, obscured from views? And you have to say, either it was done intentionally, accidentally, or it just happened over a course of time. Because the information for you to search it out for yourself is there because that's exactly what I did. I searched it out for myself. And where did I look? <laughs> Primarily uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the book of Acts. Some from Hebrews, some from Revelation. But to take it in context and find out what really happened. Now, the book of Acts. Chapter 1 starts out with, let's see, something like, uh, uh, the former treatise have I made, let's see, the former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and, and say, say and do, until the time that he was taken up, after that he threw, after that he had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen, who, who, whom, the apostle apostles whom he had chosen and it goes on but the first like the first three or four verses and you go oh okay the apostles whom he had chosen well that's that has to be that has that has to be the 12 the 12 the apostles whom he had chosen and you go wait a minute what is the definition of an apostle an apostle it just means sent Someone who has sent a gopher, an errand runner, someone who has been sent for a chore, for a responsibility, for a duty. It just means sent ones, sent ones. <laughs> the sent ones whom he had chosen. And you go, okay, what sent ones is he talking about? Well, in the first chapter of Acts, it goes on to say, in the first few verses, unto whom he showed himself alive for 40 days with many infallible proofs 
for 40 days with many infallible proofs, he showed himself alive to these apostles. Well, was it the 12? Because, you know, people don't like to be wrong. I don't like to be wrong. I'm sure you don't like to be wrong or to do something stupid. If I do something, something stupid, I don't really want anybody to know about it. If, I, if I'm the cowardly lion someplace, we have seen in the past few months, every fail-safe system of this country just crashed to the ground. People who had opportunity to tell the truth, to do what's right, <laughs> judges, senators, congressmen, all the legislature, vice president, we have seen them just like crash and burn to go on. <laughs> this is absolutely crazy. How could this country end up in a spot where it looks like the United States, <laughs> the Constitution of the United States has been so abused, it's dead. Well, is that where we are? Well, going back to sent ones, apostles whom he had chosen. Was it just the twelve? to whom he showed himself alive with many infallible proofs for 40 days. Well, if you read Matthew, read the end of Matthew, and it sounds like, oh, Jesus, because in, in five places, five different places in Matthew and Mark, it talks about going to Galilee. And it was, go to Galilee, I'm going to go before you, Jesus saying, I'm going to go to Galilee in front of you. I will be there before you even get there. I'm going to be there. <laughs> go to Galilee after I'm risen from the dead. You go to Galilee and you'll see me there. Because the way it's worded in all of these times, <laughs> five different times, it is... You, I will be there before you even get there. After I'm risen, you go to Galilee, and there shall you see me. So, <laughs> okay, back to common knowledge. What was common knowledge then? Okay, these people who went to Galilee. Because now, if you took and looked at how many people were in Israel at the time, well, about six million in the nation of Israel. And 10% of that, 10% of six million would be 600,000. And 1% of six million is what? It's 60,000 people. How many, now a disciple, what's the definition of disciple? A student follower, a student of the word, a student of the gospel, a student, okay, a learner. A disciple, a follower. That's the definition of a disciple. And the definition of apostle, again, is sent one. Sent one. So, <laughs> after Jesus was wait, after Jesus was raised from the dead, he'd been dead three days in hell, raised from the dead, <laughs> right in the pit of hell. Okay, after he was raised from the dead, Who's the first ones that saw him? You got a handful of women, five or six, you know, Mary from Magdala and Mary, the mother of Jesus, you know, the, his earth suit maker. Okay, so you got this handful of women that go very early in the morning and bring, and they're gonna, like we would, would say, okay, spices and stuff to, to anoint his body, pack it in, whatever cover it with and they were going to go with this stuff and do stuff and when they got there <laughs> this angel had rolled away the stone so they could get into the tomb it wasn't so Jesus could get out but the angel had rolled the stone away and the women could then go into the tomb and what do they they find out he's gone he's not there and then the angel tells them, oh, he's risen from the dead. And he goes before you into Galilee, and there shall you see him. Okay, so they have this message, this mandate, this directive 
from an angel. And then, as they're leaving, they see, <laughs> they see Jesus. And then Jesus gives them the same directive with a, an additional statement. He says, go tell my brethren, brethren, brothers and sisters. At that instant, at that, by that time, they had to have been able to have been born of God, the DNA of God in them to be born of God, to be called out of their mother's womb and into their heaven father's womb, gone from natural birth to super, supernatural birth for Jesus to look at those women and say, go tell my brethren. <laughs> Maybe it could be even you, brethren, brother, sister, born of God, Jesus. <laughs> you look like Jesus because you have the same heaven father. Okay. So go tell my brethren that they go before me into Galilee and there shall they see me. So the mandate then was given to the women by Jesus to go tell his brethren. Now, followers, disciples, he could have, if it was only 1% of the population, that could be 60,000 people with the mandate to go to Galilee and there shall they see him. Go tell my brethren. So they go off and start telling and some are able to go because it's a 60 mile walk from Jerusalem to Galilee. So they go and if you read the last chapter, like I say, the last chapter of Matthew, it sounds like the 11 went because it ends, it goes with, oh, and then the 11 departed on to Galilee and went into the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, <laughs> then it said, when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted, something like that. Okay, but they're saying stuff that it makes it sound like. Matthew recorded something that if you didn't know better, you would think that they went to the Galilee gathering with <laughs> all of these apostles whom Jesus chose. Like, you would think that all of these legislators and senators and stuff, that they would have done the right thing. <laughs> all the judges, that they would have done the right thing. <laughs> All of the, all of, all of the, uh, what do you call them? Mm, uh, attorney general, state, and all of this stuff, that they would have done the right thing in the election, you know? The fail-safe system that failed. <laughs> so, so here, it sounds like the 11, the way Matthew records it, it sounds like they went. But then, you know, when you go to the Gospel of John, and you go to the, what does it got? 21 chapters in John. And in the next to the last, the next to the last chapter, as it gets to the end of the, the chapter, and of course it didn't write it in chapter and verse, but it was broken up that way so we could locate stuff easy. So it sounds like, so in the next to the last chapter that he's finishing up his discourse about Jesus walking on this earth, and it records the, the first time that Jesus saw the 11 after the resurrection, for the evening of the first day after the, uh, let's see, the two on the road to Emmaus had showed up and said, we have seen the Lord, that he had uh, appeared to Simon. Now, here's another thing. <laughs> that Simon that he had appeared to and the two that were on the road to Emmaus, they're talking to the 11, because Judas had already hung himself. They're talking to the 11, and the statement that they make, is, and he's, he appeared to Simon. Well, Simon who? Because they're talking to Simon Peter is there among the 11. So. Uh, they wouldn't have been talking about Simon Peter. They were talking about another Simon. They were talking about a Simon where they had had 
a dinner just a few days before where Martha was there and Mary was there, Lazarus was there, the Lazarus that he raised from the dead. They were there at the dinner and that's where Mary put the spikenard oil on his head and on his feet, anointed him against against the day of his burial. So <laughs> it wasn't that it was a Simon from the dinner, not Simon Peter, that, oh, he has appeared to Simon. That's one of the first people that Jesus went and found afterwards. The one who has was at that dinner that pre offered his home as a place for the dinner. Okay. So was there. But then the 11, because it was, okay, John is saying, all right, the 11, first time that they saw him, evening of the first day first day of the week and then the next time that he appeared to the 11 Thomas was with him because Thomas wasn't there the first time so the next time is eight days later in the same place so <laughs> eight days later in the same place they were in the same place that's the second time that he showed himself to the 11 and I know I keep pounding this point over and over again but this is extremely important <laughs> I've done it for years and years so I'm gonna do it forever this is an extremely important point the Apostles whom he had chosen the sent ones whom he had chosen to whom he showed himself alive with many infallible proofs how big is the ministry of Jesus on this earth each one of us need to take our place and do our part if you're counting on a judge, a senator, a congressman, kiss it goodbye. You can kiss this country goodbye forever if you're counting on them. These people in positions of responsibility, authority, and power, they have responsibility, yeah. But we saw them cave at their responsibilities. They run and hid, just like the 11. Now, I'm not saying in that place that I would done exceptionally well, and I wouldn't have run away and hid. They were afraid for their life. You know, there's been death threats on all sorts of people now. And there's been people that have been killed for what they know, for what they expounded upon, affidavits that they have signed. So, second time that he appeared to the 11 was eight days later in the same place. Now we go back to Matthew, and Matthew, okay, in the end, that it says he they say they when they went to the uh, mountain where Jesus had appointed them and it says and then when they when they saw the Lord okay and record some other stuff that Jesus said to him he really he gave him a thorough tongue lashing because something that they didn't do they ran and hid they ran and hid. They didn't do. They didn't go like they were supposed to. They missed the Galilee gathering. And I can prove it to you with the next thing that John said. <sighs> 21st chapter of John. And it lists the... Goes on then where Jesus appeared to the... No. Where Jesus is on the shore of the lake. That's where he is. And there was seven guys recorded seven guys out in the boat John and Peter were among them and John is recording this <laughs> John and Peter were out there in the boat fishing and Jesus said have you caught any fish you got any meat they said no we don't got nothing eh, we don't have nothing haven't caught a thing he said throw your net on the right side of the boat so they threw the net on the right side of the boat and they pulled up such a pile of fish that the nets were about to break. And then other disciples from the shore, other disciples from the shore, came out in another boat to help them out. <laughs> it's quite possible, quite probable, that there was maybe 2,000 people or more with Jesus on the shore disciples that had been to the Galilee gathering that were on their way back up to Jerusalem because they had been at uh, 
Galilee gathering at the Sea of Galilee up on a certain place that they knew to go. See, Matthew, when he records, and went to a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. They went to that mountain where they knew to go, but they didn't get there until after the meeting. It probably went on for days, three or four or five, six, seven, eight, nine days, where Jesus was there with all of these people at the Galilee gathering. And the common knowledge thought that people had then was the Galilee gathering people, the ones that went to Galilee at the appointed time and met with Jesus after the resurrection. That was the common knowledge thought. <laughs> because there was thousands of them. Everybody knew at least one person. Everybody in that whole country knew at least one person that had gone to the Galilee gathering. Every one of them. Six million people. They all knew at least one. Some knew 10 or 15 that had gone to the Galilee gathering. Eyewitnesses to whom he showed himself alive with many infallible proofs for 40 days. Now, John goes on to record, you know, after the, uh, have you got any meat? And they threw in the net and they got 153 large fish, drug the net to shore. Peter jumps into the, puts on his coat. He's standing there in his underwear. He puts on his coat. He was hot from dragging that net in and out and not catching any fish. So he was standing there in his underwear. He put his robe on, jumped in the water, swam to shore. And then they drug the other guys, drug the net in with all the fishes. He got to the shore and there was already fish on the, with a the fire. They were having breakfast, a shore lunch. All of these thousands of people that had been to the Galilee gathering, they were having a shore lunch with Jesus. <laughs> And they were had stuff there to eat. Jesus looks at Peter and says, Peter, Peter, do you love me more than these? And the backdrop for Peter was, do you love me more than these, Peter? Then all of these thousands of people that showed up at the Galilee gathering. You think you're hot stuff, Peter? You think you're hot stuff, all you senators and congressmen? Do you love me more than, than these, all of these thousands that actually showed up when I sent them the message, go to Galilee, and I will meet with you there? They knew about it. He said, he talked about the Galilee gathering before he went to the cross. The Galilee gathering to go there was broadcast through the nation it was common knowledge. The gathering was common knowledge. The commission to go there, <laughs> given by Jesus coming out of his own mouth, to go to Galilee, that was a common knowledge statement, a common knowledge mandate that was given, to go to Galilee and I will meet with you there. I'm gonna be there before you get there. So, Peter, do you love me more than these, the ones that showed up? He says, oh, no, Lord. Lord, you know everything. You know all things. You know that I love you. Well, <laughs> so Peter didn't make it to the Galilee gathering. He didn't make it, along with the other 11. They were hiding in the barn. It's not the, this thing that we have seen go on around us. It's not the first, it's not the first time all of these super hot shots have uh, fell to the ground and failed. So what comes next? <laughs> well, I'm not quite sure what comes next. We know that the resurrection happened. We know that the new birth is real. Born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. See, years later, Peter said that. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. 
talking about the new birth. Born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. The DNA of God in you, the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. And what comes next in this country? I don't know. Not quite sure. Been in a bit of a quandary over what comes next. A little befuddled over what comes next. But I know there's lots for each of us to do. Do, be, live. What comes next? <laughs> I don't know. But we're going to keep on keeping on. We're going to enjoy the journey. We might see some really, really tough times in this country. I'm not sure. It might be a cakewalk. It might be hell on earth for who knows how long. I know I don't want to spend 40 years wandering in the wilderness, although that, that, <laughs> that could happen. Don't know. I do know that this is the only country on the planet where the foundational structure is built upon principles and philosophies from the Word of God. This thing of, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. That's a foundational concept taken from the Word. Now, the 11, 12 at the time, got in all sorts of trouble with Jesus when they tried to play the pyramid scheme, pecking order thing, uh, one to sit on your right hand, the other to sit on your left. I want to be full of power, you know, to rule over people around me, uh, to make slaves even of those around me. Now, there's lots of people <laughs> that try that and they are met with fierce resistance from Jesus, because that's he says not not that way. That's not the way it is in in my kingdom. That's not the way it is in my kingdom. If you want to be great in the kingdom of God, be great in the kingdom of God. Be a servant to those around. Serve those around you. Be a servant, and they use the word minister, <laughs> but. There are things that have gone so sideways, understanding common knowledge, common knowledge again, that now the word minister, if you look it up in the dictionary, look it up in American Standard Dictionary, look it up in Webster's. The minister means the one in control. But you look at the definition, the way that it's used throughout the entire Bible, Minister is the one who ministers, meets the need of those around. Whether it's a seamstress or a waitress or a waiter or a cook. If you, whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord. Whatever you do. And if you can't do it in his name, you probably shouldn't do it. If you can't do it in his name, you probably shouldn't do it. <laughs> so... He said to occupy until he comes. And this thing of the catching away of the church, I don't find that any place. I know where they get that thought from in, in, in the Word. But as far as escaping, the catching away of the church, we're all going to escape. Run up your credit card to the max, and then there, here comes the rapture, and we'll escape, and we don't have to pay back the credit card. <laughs> I know people that did that. Uh, they had to pay back the credit card. Some of them, it cost them severely. Anyhow, but this thing of the catching away of the church, I don't see that happening any place in the Word. It's the, the thought that for the born of God people, fighting against Satan's kingdom, you know, you know okay, truth, victory, that the new birth isn't enough, that being born again isn't enough, that the DNA of God isn't enough, the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, it isn't enough. And we have to be rescued out of this place because we couldn't 
defeat the devil, <laughs> crummy little loser, we, that we couldn't defeat him, that concept of that we got to be rescued because all this stuff that there's Jesus said, the things that I have done shall you do also, and even greater things than, than these shall you do, because I go unto my Father. Me? Uh, you? Yeah. The apostles whom he had chosen, those are the ones that went to Galilee. Those are the ones that showed up. The ones that had, oh yes, Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross, that you went to hell, that you were raised from the dead. And Jesus, I accept the covenant that you made. And God Almighty, God Almighty, I want you to be my father. I want to be born of you. Old things passed away, all things become new. That's what I want, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's what, he needs your permission. God needs your permission to cause you to be born again. He needs your permission, he needed to. He needed your permission to cause you to be born of him, where he called you out of your mother's womb, brought you into your father's womb, called you from natural birth, brought you into supernatural birth. This whole thing of um, lordship, like what you find in the European countries, kings and queens and lordship, where it's so, you know, and it's, uh, you know, called from before you were conceived, even called and, and that you're to rule over those around. That's a bunch of bullshit. And that's what Jesus said, not in my kingdom. No, not that way. <sighs> he that's greatest among you. What did he say of himself? I didn't come to be served. I came to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. Well, <laughs> we live and breathe and meet the needs of those around. We take our place and do our part. What comes on the next page, I'm not sure, but whatever it is, we know that right now, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, waiting till his enemies be made his footstool. You have a part in that. I got a part in that. We all have a part in that. That his enemies, death, hell, the grave, Satan's kingdom, that we have a part in. <laughs> As he is sitting and he said, sit in my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. That's the father speaking to the son. Well, how is that gonna happen except through his kids? As we take our place, as we do our part, the enemies of Jesus become his footstool. We get to be part of the fulfilling. You get to be part of the fulfillment of sit at my right hand and tell him, make your enemies your footstool. The power of God working through you, the DNA of God in you, spirit helper on you, <laughs> the Holy Spirit in you. You know, when he said, when Jesus said, and it says that he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost. <laughs> it's a mandate from him to do it. <laughs> he was given that as a mandate to you, me, everybody, so that we could cause Jesus' enemies to be his footstool and take our place into our part. So there you go. That's, that's where I'm leaving it for today <laughs> here on this last week of March in 2021 and enjoy the journey. It could be a wild ride, but uh, enjoy the journey that is well possible along the way, okay? <laughs>